fortress here, which was finished in 1935, yeah. and it was the biggest fortress in Europe. It's from here to the other end, it's about 1,000, it's over a kilometre long. Uh -huh. uh, now, uh, what happened was, basically, the reason why, I'll get to the very end of the story <laughs> already, is that here on the left, we had these, uh, there were barracks. These barracks, I asked the gentleman, he told me this is from 1946, but there were two barracks here. And when the, the alert was given for full mobilization at 0030 on the morning of the 10th of um, May 1940, and in, in, in these two barracks, uh, in a case of war, they had to be pulled down. The gun crews were actually unloading uh, stuff from these barracks, taking the filing cabinets out and this type of thing, instead of manning the guns. The guns, when they, the gliders came down from the west, incidentally, because they circled round and then they landed on the roof, yeah. which was quite quite high. Uh, but the the um, no warning, no proper warning was given because the gun crews were in there. And when they actually landed, the guns, not all of them, but most of them, were unmanned. <laughs> I mean, it is utter incredible. There's a mobilization for war. The Germans do not land for three hours. They have three hours warning, more than three hours, in fact. And they were doing the administrative work. I mean, how can... I, as a former military person, I just cannot believe the stupidity of this. Uh, I don't know what the excuse is. Maybe we'll hear some excuses when we're in there. But, um, uh, but that's the reason. That's the reason why this fell. And they didn't expect it. Yeah, no, they had a, they had warning. They were it was it there was a mo it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make, if they didn't expect it. It doesn't make any difference. The, the war had already started. There had yes, been a war in since September. Yeah, yeah they were first September 1939. This was this was the 10th of May. Um, but you know to be unloading. Hello, um, Unloading rather than doing. So this is the main entrance. This is the only entrance into this fortification. Uh, well. The Germans made some other entrances by throwing uh, charges down. Cause another thing is uh, that that's that's the number two reason for the fall of the fort is the uh, fact that the Germans had hollow charge explosives, which was m far more um, powerful than anything so far known, which allowed them to blow up a couple of cupolas up on on the roof, but not all of them. Because up here we've got the they've got the bridges over the Albert and Albert Canal, and mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, the Meuse, and the in a case of war. The uh, guns which were on the roof here were aimed, were meant to start firing. That every, all the targets had been laid out. It was, it was just a case of a telephone call. The trouble was the people inside the fort couldn't make a decision by themselves. There was no independence of of action. They had to have all instructions sent to them. So I mean, they could say, "Well, you've got to aim at this point here," and bang, it, it, it's already laid out. There's nothing to think about. They just uh, lay the guns and fire. But the problem was they hadn't received the instructions. Um, of the four bridges that this was supposed to cover, all of them were mined, all of them ready for explosion. Uh, but the, they, they were captured by the glider pilot, except the one at um, Han, which was actually blown up by some young Belgian sapper, who had the, 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 the only person that showed any initiative on that day, yeah. on the Belgian side, who actually blew it up. Uh, but uh, but the uh, but by then I mean just one but the other three were captured intact and and, and the Germans had pontoon bridges but the the Meuse and the Albert Canal are really very powerful uh, rivers yeah. and they could have been defended. Yeah. So coming into the tunnel, the uh, first thing that strikes me about this tunnel, the entrance, is that it's not particularly uh, well defended. Or defensible. Oh. This is the contamination room. Uh, one of the reasons why it surrendered was because the um, some quickline caught fire and the soldiers inside thought that it was chlorine gas and this is why they gave up on the 11th, one of the reasons they gave up on the 11th of May and, um, 
but this 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 view here would suggest that they should have known what they what they were doing and to put their liquid gas mask on. On cas d'attaque de gaz, quand l'ISE a trouvé une salle de spilt, les épuisés se sont toxiques, alimenté la ventilation de la caserne de terrain, pose des eaux, le pot de masque anti-gaz n'était plus nécessaire. So there we have what we do in the case of um, poison gas. Um, extremely clear in instructions. And what did they do here when they thought it was chlorine? They gave up. That's not written there. Right. Can't leave the door open. Oh. Tunnels. Look the same as the enough, but... Well, that's what we can see. This thing strikes me here on the ground is that um, they're not... Hard. Maybe there were railway lines here, I can't tell. But uh, the logical thing is this could should be a, a narrow gauge railway. As, as for example in another place I believe in the Maginot line was entirely like that, and that uh, certainly the Ostfell was. So we've got the toilet here, and it's pretty handy from the point of view is that if you wanted to uh, use the toilet, there we have a metal, uh, metal case on the something of a shooting here when you're inside. Uh, Pulled on the ground. And I presume these things on the left are showers. Can't fill the toilets anymore because someone's in here. Oh, there's a model of a soldier, and he's got a nice, uh, nice friend in there with him. Now, these, these are places where people are put in if they need to uh, behave themselves. Um, got 21 days in here. Mm. I'm finding a way into one of these cells. I mean, that'd be, I mean there's only three of them here, and one of them may even be an office, but it's pretty brutal conditions, really because um, you would not allow anything there, you wouldn't any covers or anything like that, unless the temperature dropped below 10 degrees, you would allow one bad quality um, cover at night, and that like this gentleman here has got, and that was it. And you know, no reading material, no cigarettes, you had any food you got you delivered there, and uh, you could you end up in a place like this just because the train, you missed the train, or the train was late or something like that, uh, when you're coming back from leave, and these people in these were, were uh, not uh, on the main, they were not professional soldiers, they were just people doing national service, some people, people just turned up, they could spend a week in here and then go off somewhere else, so I mean, morale must have been really, really low.